topic of our lesson today is Good day students, welcome to class time. I am Janet Y. Taylor, your CXC Agricultural Science teacher for this session. Today, we are going to look at breeds of farm animals. And we're going to begin our lesson, but I just want to encourage you to be well at home and to pay attention. Make, th make sure that you are comfortable. So we are looking at breeds of animals, of farm animals in the Caribbean. And so these are the objectives we'd like to achieve today. One, is at the end of the lesson, students should be able to name the breeds of different classes of animals reared in the Caribbean. Two, explain the purposes of the different breeds. And three, describe all characteristics are inherited in animals. And I want to begin by looking at breeds. What are breeds, students? Breeds are a stock of animals or plants within a species having a distinctive appearance and typically having been developed by deliberate selection. In our region, we have two types of breeds. Our local breeds, we also call them indigenous breeds, and these are the breeds that have been in our region for a very long time. We also have the exotic breeds, and these breeds are the breeds that have been imported from different parts of the world, and these breeds we take into our region because we value the qualities that are found in those breeds. Now, once we are going to look at exotic breeds or animals that comes in from different parts of the world, we have to then look at what we call the benefits that we are going to gain. And bear in mind, students, that there are also going to be some disadvantages. So these are some advantages or benefits that we are going to get from these exotic or imported breeds. We're going to be looking for, in, to, in order to increase our milk production, these animals will do so by giving us high milk production. We're going to have rapid growth to maturity, for example, in our broilers. And in the beef breeds, we're going to have heavily fleshed carcasses. However, students, because we are living in a tropical region, and most of these breeds are coming out of temperate regions, there are some disadvantages. For example, these animals may not be able to stand our hot and humid weather as well as the local breeds. They'll also be more susceptible to diseases more easily than the local breeds that we have here. And sometimes students, if the conditions are not good, then these animals, they will not be able to produce as much as they should. And those are the things that, are, that will prevent these animals from doing well. We now want to look at some pictures of the breeds of animals and the classes of animals that we rear in our region. And for today's students, I want to focus on breeds from our goats, our poultry, our cattle, our pigs, our sheep, and also rabbits. So you're seeing pictures there of the breeds that we have in our region. Looking good, and we're looking at what we call indigenous breeds and also exotic breeds. I want to look first at the poultry breeds, because most of us in, in our region and in Jamaica, we really enjoy poultry. And we raise those animals for two purposes. We have the layers for eggs and the broilers for meat. An example of a layer breed, we can see that on the screen now, we have the Rhode Island Red, and the other breeds that we have are the White Leghorn, the Bevan Brown, Eye Line, or Hybrid Crosses. The broiler breeds, and you're seeing here the Vantress Cross, but there's also Peterson and Shaver as well. For rabbits, we have the most important breeds. We have the Flemish Giant that you're seeing there, the New Zealand Red. We have also the California and the Chinchilla as well. For our cattle, we have the dairy breeds and the beef breeds. 
An example that you're seeing there now, you're seeing an example of the Jamaica Hope. And this breed was developed by Dr. T.P. Leckie. And the other breeds you're seeing is Jersey and Olstein. And then we have a beef breed, the Jamaica Red, that you're seeing on the screen now. Now, students, as we move along, I just want you to note these breeds. And so I just want to give you a question for you to think about as we continue into the presentation. Table one shows two breeds of livestock in the Caribbean. I want you to state the purposes for which these breeds are used for. And these are the classes and the breeds, Jamaica Hope and the Barbados Black Belly. So at the end of the presentation, I hope you have your answers ready so that I'll be able to give you the correct answer as well. Continuing by looking at breeds, we have the goat breeds, we have the British Alpine, the Anglo-Nubian, and the Seinen, and the Toggenberg. You're looking at the Anglo-Nubian. If you look at these breeds, you're looking, for example, at certain characteristics. You're seeing how the ears are floppy and how the animal is standing straight. And then you're seeing the Seinen right here. And you're looking also because you're able to identify the breeds most time based on the color of the animal. Good? <clears throat> Sheep, breeds of sheep, we have the Barbados black belly and we have the black head Persian. And if you look carefully, you're seeing that black belly as outlined here in the picture. Those are some breeds that we have in our region. And the final breed we want to look at today are the breeds of pigs. We have many breeds in our region, but mostly we have a lot of land race, large white, duroc, Hampshire, and what you're seeing is the large white. So what we have just looked at students, we were able to identify the breeds based on their coat color, and we were able to name them as well for the different classes of animals. I now want us to move on now to look at the purposes for which we rear these animals. These animals are raised in our country and in our region for different purposes. One, they provide food, they supply power for plowing and transport. They also create employment opportunities and provide farm income. They also provide recreation and serve as pets and they also provide opportunities for research. Good? I hope you are following. Now these animals, they also provide us with certain commodities. For example, milk, eggs, and meat. These are the classes of animals and breed that provide us with milk. We have our dairy cows, for example, the Jamaica Hope, or goats, we have the Toggenberg, and for sheep, we do not have a specific name of the breeds that we use for milk, but the milk from the sheep is used mainly for cheese and yogurt. From our poultry, we are getting our eggs from, for example, the white leg horn, the Rhode Island red, eye line, and these breeds, we could also refer to them as dual purpose because at the end of their laying out period, we then convert them into what we call stewing in, and then we also use them for meat. The animals that are used for meat, we have our beef cattle, Jamaica black, Jamaica red, for pigs, pork, and bacon, we have the tom word for bacon and the large white for pork. Sheep, we are getting lamb and mutton from all the breeds, including the Barbados black belly. For our poultry, we are getting from our, from our broilers, for example, the Ventress Cross, the Peterson, and the Shaver. And the rabbits, the two most important ones, are the New Zealand white and the Flemish giant. So what we have covered students, we have looked at the names of the breeds, their characteristics, and then we have also looked at the commodities that we are getting from these breeds. And so we now want to move on to look at some revision questions in order so that we can recap the lesson. And what I want you to do students is to make a note of the answers 
from the questions so that, so that at the end of the presentation, I'll be able to tell you if your answer is correct or not. Question one. Sane in goats is reared mainly for A, milk, B, milk and meat, C, hair, D, skin. Write down your answer, students. I want to make sure that you're following me. Good. Which white breed of pigs is noted for being excellent mothers, producing large litters, and having a deep body? Selections A, Duroc, B, Berkshire, C, Landrace, and D, Hampshire. I want to give you two more questions. Which of the following is not a milk breed of cattle? A, Jamaica Hope, B, Jersey, C, Jamaica Red, D, Olstein. And the final question we want to look at in this section, a farmer who was mating his Flemish giant females to New Zealand white males was rearing, is it A, goats, B, rabbits, C, sheep, D, cattle. So we have just recapped the, the, those two sections where we looked at naming the breeds and the purposes, purposes of these breeds. We now want to look at how characteristics are inherited in our farm animals. So we want to start this section by looking at breeding systems in farm animals. Once we talk about breeding system students, we need to know the definition of a breed. A breed is a group of animals of the same species that have certain characteristics in common. And what are some of these characteristics? The color of the animal, the coat color, the shape of the body, and behavioral characteristics. What do we mean by behavioral characteristics? We want to know the temperament of the animal or the docility. Is this animal calm and quiet or is the animal aggressive? Because when you're putting animals in the breeding program, they have to be calm and docile so that they will not damage their young ones. Good? And so I now need, once we're gonna talk about breeding, there are some basic principles we need to understand. And so I now move to look at genetic inheritance. Once we talk about genetic inheritance, we are talking about the characteristics that are passed down from one generation to the next. Good? And once we are talking about genetic inheritance, we must talk about DNA because this is the material that will be passed down from the parents to their offspring. Good? All the information students for growth, survival, and reproduction for the next generation is found in the DNA. So genetic inheritance is very important once we start to talk about inbreeding in farm animals. Good? Let's move on now to look at what we talk, when we talk about sexual reproduction, what is going to happen? We're going to have the male and the female. They're going to come together. And once the sexual act is done and the fertilization takes place, then we are going to have what we call an offspring being produced, all being well. And so in sexual reproduction, the genetic material of two parents is combined and passed on to one individual. Although the offspring receives a combination of genetic material from two parents, certain genes from each parent will dominate the expression of different traits. And I want to give you an example now for you to understand what we are talking about. But let me go on to look at some other terms first or some other definition that we need to know as we continue into genetic inheritance. We need to know what is the meaning of an allele phenotype and genotype. An allele is a particular form of a gene and they are passed 
from parents to their offspring. A genotype, on the other hand, is a combination of two alleles, one received from each parent. And the phenotype is a physical expression of a genotype. And so you and I students, we have, what we, we have inherited genes from our parents, and sometimes some of these genes, because they have dominant characteristics. And so I want you to understand as we move on now to look at an example in cattle. So when we talk about dominant and recessive genes, I have this example here that we are crossing a polled bull, that means this animal have no horn, with the female, which is also polled, no horn. When we cross these, uh, these animals, we'll be able to look at the alleles. So we are seeing the heterozygous allele for what we call polled animals. That means these animals, even though we have a dominant gene and a recessive gene, the dominant one is going to supersede the recessive one, and so these animals are all going to become polled animals. When we cross these two, these are the possibilities that the offspring may be. So we are looking at, when we cross them, these alleles, we are going to be getting a genotype of dominant homozygous. The animals are polled, that is, they are without horn. Or we could get polled animals that are heterozygous, right? And then we could also get homozygous recessive, that means these animals are horned. But what we really want to achieve is to get the dominant animals. We want polled animals as much as we can from this cross. Good? Let us now go straight now to look into our systems of breeding. We have looked at genetic inheritance, and so it's going to be easier for your students to understand as we go into the different systems of breeding. And the first one I want to look at is crossbreeding. What do we mean by crossbreeding? This occurs when an animal is mated with another animal of the same species, but of a different breed. Let me repeat that. Crossbreeding occurs when an animal is mated with another animal of the same species but of a different breed. And I want to give you some examples of some crossbreeding that has been done in our region. And I want to look at Jamaica first. And the example is the Jamaica Hope. This breed was developed in Jamaica by Dr. T.P. Leckie by crossing the zebu cattle from India with Jersey cattle from Europe. The resulting breed is a good milk producer with high butterfat content and resistant to some diseases. The next example we want to look at is the Buffalipsa out of Trinidad and Tobago. This breed was developed by crossing different breeds of river buffaloes. The resulting meat is of a higher quality than the top cuts of prime beef and breeding stock have been exported to other Caribbean countries. The final example we want to look at in terms of crossbreeding done in our region is the crossing of sheep in Barbados to give us the Barbados black belly sheep. And these animals, they are tolerant to heat. They have a coarse hair and they do not have wool. Good? So we have just covered crossbreeding students. Make sure that you leave your questions to the end and make sure that you are paying attention. Good? Am I clear? Now, we want to continue by looking at crossbreeding. What is the purpose of carrying out crossbreeding? The aim, students, is to improve our breeds because we want to get the best out of our animals. If we are having desirable parents, right? We want to put them together so that the resulting offspring will be better than the parents. And this is very important as we look at livestock because we must upgrade our livestock in our region. Yes? Very good. There are advantages, however, to crossbreeding. When we crossbreed the animals, they show increased vigor and productivity. What do I mean by that? These offspring, they are going to be stronger. They are going to be better milk producers 
They'll be able to resist diseases. And these are the characteristics that we are looking for, some of them at least, when we carry out crossbreeding. What we are doing in crossbreeding, we are combining the genes of two breeds. And characteristics are controlled by the dominant gene from both breeds, and that, is, that tends to be expressed. Now I want to look at an example of crossbreeding in pigs. So here we have our boar. And in Jamaica, you know, we call them male pigs. Sometimes we call them bran. So we have our boar here. Or we could also call the animal sire, that means the male animal. We have our sow, the female animal is also called dam. These two animals, they are of good quality, having good characteristics. And the aim is to crossbreed these two animals so that we get in a good what we call offspring. We want some fatness to take straight into the market. When we cross these two animals, we are able to get what we call excellent offspring that will go straight into the market. Good? So we are taking desirable characteristics from the boar and from the sow to ensure that the offspring right here will have desirable characteristics as well. Even better than the parents. If we go now to look at what we call a terminal cross, we have desired boar A is going to cross with our sow and the resulting what we call offspring, the F1 female, will have excellent qualities. We then mate this F1 female with another desired boar of the same breed and what we get now is better quality in terms of fatteners that are ready now for the market. These what we call the F2 generation, we will not put them back into the breeding program. These will go straight to the market because we don't want any undesirable characteristics at all that may result from these crosses to end up back in our breeding program. The breeding stock must always contain desirable characteristics. Good? So we have just covered crossbreeding. I now want us to look at inbreeding. By definition, students, inbreeding occurs when animals of the same breed are mated together. What do we mean in our normal Jamaican term? This is when animals that are related are mating. So mother with son, father with daughter. And in, in humans, we'd have called this incest. But in animals, we are calling this inbreeding. It means that it is not good students to have inbreeding. Because most time when inbreeding takes place, we are seeing that there are some risks that are attached to this. Good? The closer the relation of these animals is going to be what we call more risk attached when we get the offspring from this type of breeding. Good? And so I now want to move on to look at effects of inbreeding. Once inbreeding takes place, it's going to reduce the productivity of the offspring in many ways. And these are some ways in which the productivity of the offspring from the inbreeding will be reduced. Poor reproductive efficiency, higher mortality rates, lower growth rates, higher frequency of hereditary abnormalities, shorter lifespan, and decreased resistance to infection. We are saying students, let me give for example, when we talk about lower growth rates, Sometimes farmers at home, they have the herd running together. The goats moving up and down together in breeding taking place or even inside your pen. And you're saying that, but these animals should be at a certain weight. And you find that they are not moving in terms of growing in height or in weight. And this most time is as a result of inbreeding. You may, say, you may see other abnormalities come up as well in your breed. Animals walking funny and you realize that inbreeding has been taking place. When it's time for you, for you to put all the animals, for them to breed, some of these animals, nothing is happening because sometimes they even have spontaneous abortion and so on as a result of what we call the risk and effects of inbreeding. The greater the degree of inbreeding, the higher you're going to have a reduction in the productivity of the animals. Good? 
So do we understand in breathing? We do not encourage this. Even though sometimes when you carry out inbreeding on the short term, you can get good animals. But if you continue with inbreeding on the long term, you are doing it over and over again. These animals are not going to do well in the breeding program. There's going to be too many abnormalities that you do not want for your breeding program. Good? I have a table that I want to share with you. And that table is looking at inbreeding coefficients for various inbred relationships. When we look at inbreeding students, we are looking at different relationships. For example, when we have the sire or what we call the boar mating with the daughter, we are going to have more risk of inbreeding. That means we are going to see more undesirable characteristics which we do not want to see in our breed. So an inbreeding coefficient of 25% is very high. It means that any animal from this offspring, they are going to have undesirable characteristics. Good? If we have what we call a half-sib mating, where we are going to have parents of common sire and dam, we are going to get an inbreeding coefficient of 12.5%. If we are full sib mating, we are going to go back to see an increase in the inefficient in breeding coefficient. That means the undesirable characteristics will be present. If we were to recommend in breeding, the relationship that we would recommend is animal as a single common great grandparent that will only give us 3.1% of in breeding coefficient. Let us look at an example for you to understand better what I'm talking about. So we are saying that this offspring have one common ancestor, the grandfather Ajax. Ajax is going to continue now to give us offsprings, Boris and Deb. Boris and Deb will mate and they will give us offspring, Carl, and Deb is going to give us Eva. The only thing common between these uh, what we call animals is the grandparent Ajax. However, students, if Carl and Eva should go into inbreeding, there will be a resultant animal or offspring called Zulu. This animal, because we are talking about moving from all of these coming down here to what we call the third generation, we are saying that the inbreeding coefficient would have been lower. However, Note, students, if any of Zulu's ancestors were themselves inbred animal, then Zulu's inbreeding coefficient would have increased where there will be more undesirable characteristics found in this animal. Is it clear? Good. So, let us continue. In inbreeding as well, there are two systems based on how closely or how distantly the animals are related. If they are related closely, we talk about close breeding. For example, when you have sibling matings and parent sibling matings. When you have line breeding, we have mating of distantly related animals that have a common ancestor. So, for example, they could be cousins or great-grand or grand. These are what we mean by line breeding. So, what we have covered so far, students, we have looked at cross-breeding. We have looked at line breeding. And we are saying that we do not recommend line breeding because of the undesirable characteristics that will be passed on from parent to sibling when we have what we call relatives that are related and we allow them to breed. Good? I now move on to another system of breeding, and we call that one upgrading. It is very good, students, when you are raising animals, so always upgrade your herd. You can, what we call, get in what we call exotic breeds as well. 
There are many things that we can do because we want our breeds to stand out because we want to make the maximum what we call get the best out of them so that we can maximize our profits. Good? So when we talk about upgrading, it involves the crossing of a native or a local breed with breeds from other countries of the region. What are we looking for from these animals that we are taking in to upgrade, to upgrade our stock? We want to get desirable characteristics that will be incorporated into our herd so that we'll be able to improve our herd and the state of our herd. This must be done, however, in a controlled manner. And so these are some examples that I want us to look at in terms of upgrading. Let us say we have two animals that are purebred. We have a bull and we have the female animal. What we are going to do, we are getting purebred animals. Good? So we have the purebred bull and we have the purebred cow. When we cross these two animals, the offspring or the F1 generation is going to know a 50% of the father which is a purebred bull, and 50% from the mother, which is a purebred cow. This animal now is going to be very important as we now continue to upgrade the breed. So the first offspring is going to be 50% pure. If we take that 50% pure offspring and we make that animal with a 100% pure breed, we then further upgrade the breed to get an even purer breed. And that breed would now be what we call three quarters pure or what we call 75% pure. If we take that offspring with the three quarters pure and we make that animal to other pure breeds, we are now also further upgrading our breeds and it will now result in what we call 7-8 pure. This is very important, so upgrading bring us closer to pure breeds than any of the other systems that we have looked at before. Let's look at this example. So we're talking about bull of breed A, 100% pure. Cow of breed B, 100% pure. When we cross them, we are getting from the F1 generation 50% of the bull breed A and 50% of cow breed B. This animal will now contain equal parts of the two breeds. It means that we are upgrading our animal. Once we talk about upgrading, we are saying that we are looking at the size of the animal, the temperament, and the quality of the meat. But we must accompany upgrading with careful culling. That means we are going to remove the undesirable animals from the breeding stock we can put them for meat, but we do not want them in the breeding stock at all. Final system, back crossing, is a term given to the crossing of an hybrid organism with one of its parents. And I want to look at back crossing. So we are having the F1 progeny from the, what we call the pure breed A and B. This offspring is going to mate with another pure breed. This resulting offspring is going to be what we call the back cross progeny that will contain 75% of pure breed A and 25% of pure breed B. I want to wrap up now, students, and I want you to do this question at home. Write it down so that your teachers could mark it for you. What classes of farm animals have been developed in the region? Complete the table listing below listing breeds of farm animals and the, Carib and the Caribbean country in which they have developed. I now want to give you the answers to your questions. Question one, the answer is B, milk and meat. Question two, the answer is C, land race. Question three, the answer is three, Jamaica red. And question four, the answer is B rabbits. Thank you students. Just remember to believe in yourself and all that you are. Know that there's something inside you that is greater than any obstacle you face. That's the time we have for CSEC Agricultural Science students. Up next is Cape Biology. 
We'll be right back. Here, interactive classes for all ages on the School Time channel on OneSpotMedia.com. With a combination of live Zoom classes and recorded class time, schools not out lessons, and numerous educational content, we've created a comprehensive 24-hour channel dedicated exclusively to educating our nation's youth. Early childhood through to primary, secondary and tertiary, it's one stop on one spot for education, 24 hours. Brought to you by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information in association with Television Jamaica Limited.